All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we created our first custom ERC-20 token. Uh, we deployed it to the test blockchain. Uh, we traded some tokens back and forth between a couple of addresses, and we saw how easy it was to actually create our own custom token in order to be used um, in whatever. Uh, at the end of the video, I mentioned that there were some small improvements that we could make, uh, one of them being that we could improve the safety of the math being performed within this contract. So currently, this contract is susceptible to what are called um, overflow or underflow attacks. And I'm just gonna kind of explain what that means. So to keep track of all of our numbers, we're using the unsigned integer 256 uh, integer type. And that can take a max value which I believe is 2 to the power of 256 minus 1 something like that it's just a really big number but it's possible to pass in a number that's just one bigger than that and then just smash everything that's going on in the transaction and cause chaos and it's even theoretically possible to run arbitrary code um, against your contract by I don't know overflowing that number and breaking out of the uh, the constrained memory space. I won't get too much into that because I don't really know a lot about that, but I just know it's possible. And then the underflow attack is uh, basically passing in a negative number to an unsigned integer. So unsigned integers mean there there is no, no sign. They're only positive numbers. If you pass a negative integer uh, to an unsigned integer, um, the same thing can happen. So to prevent against that, we're going to use a nifty library called Safe Math, and this is put together by um, an awesome project called the Zeppelin Project or the Open Zeppelin Project. And what they've done is created a bunch of publicly reviewed and scrutinized contracts and interfaces that you can actually use and pull into your own contracts um, to make your contracts more robust uh, to kind of take care of all the boilerplate that um, you end up writing for every contract you write so if you go to their website opens up one.org you can see uh, they have a bunch of information a blog some documentation um, but we're gonna do is go over to their github page uh, to their Zeppelin-Solidity project and then over in contracts um, they have a bunch of contracts that you, um, you can look at so feel free to take a look at those um, when you have some free time but we're just going to take a look at this safe math um, contract and it's just a bunch of cool functions in a library um, and basically does some assertions against uh, the numbers you're working with to prevent against these overflow or underflow attacks. So we're just going to copy this. And then we're going to create a new file. We're just going to call it safe math. And then paste that in there. And then back in our contract, we're going to import that. And then within our contract, we're going to um, use this using keyword. So using safe math for unsigned integer 256. That should be it. No. Oh, spelled that wrong. I always spell that wrong. So all this is saying is replace, it's kind of uh, overlaying this safe math library on top of the unsigned integer 256 data type so that we can actually use uh, the safe math functions or methods like they were um, a part of a an unsigned integer 256 object. 
Um, the best way to explain this is to take a look at these, these methods. So this multiply method. Because we've uh, added that using statement, Whenever we use, a, whenever we reference an unsigned integer 256, or reference a number, we can, uh, or reference that variable, we can take that variable and say variable dot um, mul, and then simply pass in one argument, because that variable itself will be passed in automatically as the first argument, and I'll just demonstrate it for you as we go ahead and change all of our math operations. Um, inside of our contract. So the first operation we have here, so we want to subtract value from balances uh, message.sender. So rather than use that statement, we're going to take the balances message.sender and then dot sub. Remember because the the mapping for balances maps to a uint uh, 256 and because we're do, using that using statement we can call the dot sub method on top of that. And so the actual uint 256 variable we passed in as the first argument like this and then all you need to do is pass in the second argument. So it's just like using a method on top of an object, which is kind of cool. So we're going to do that for all of our um, math here, just to make it safe. And just so you don't have to see me type it all in, we're just going to fast forward. All right, so we've gone ahead and replaced all of our math operations with this safe math. So you can see I've added all the different methods, um, subtract, add, etc. So we should be good to go and pretty safe from any sort of weird shenanigans going on. The next thing we're going to do is make this a crowd sale contract. So we're going to base the total of total supply of tokens on people actually sending ether to this contract. So right now, let's take the total supply and bring it down to zero. So we will only bring tokens into existence when somebody sends Ether to this account. And then we're going to change this decimals to 18 to kind of reflect um, the, the, the same decimal scheme as Ethereum. So one Ether um, can be broken down to 18 decimal places. So one funk token can also be broken down into 18 decimal places. And the next thing we're going to add is a rate. So this is going to be another unsigned integer, 256 public constant rate. And that's going to equal, we'll say 500. So th the way this rate works, is that one ether will equal 500 funk tokens. 500 funk. So we don't need to send any total supply to um, the owner just yet. The next thing we're going to do is add a wallet address for um, whoever is supposed to um, receive the ether once it's been sent to the contract. So in this case, we're just going to call it owner. We don't need it to be a constant. So when we start out, um, the owner is just going to be whoever creates this contract. So we're just going to set that to message.sender. And so this is where all of the ether is going to end up. So um, because it's me, I'm going to get all the ether and then whoever buys gets the tokens. One 
other thing we need to do is create a function to actually create tokens. So we'll just create a function called create tokens. And that's going to be a payable function. So it can actually accept ether. And then we're going to want to check to make sure that we're going to want to check a few things. We're going to check to make sure that the, well, we only need to check one thing. So we're going to check to make sure that the amount of ether sent is greater than zero. So we're going to check that message dot value. is greater than zero. Then the next thing we're going to do is create these tokens. So let's just create a variable. And that's going to equal the amount of ether times uh, the rate. So message dot value so we're going to multiply that by the rate so that's the number of tokens and then we will add those tokens to the balance of whoever is sending it. So All right, so that's been added to the balance. And then the last thing we want to do is actually transfer the ether sent to the contract to the owner of the contract. So we can just call owner.transfer message.value. And if this fails, it'll actually throw an exception and then roll everything back. So that's pretty safe. So we've got this create tokens payable. Um, and then we're going to add one other convenience function. And I've talked about this before, but we're going to add a fallback function. And a fallback function is just a function with no name that gets called whenever you don't actually pass a function name. So this allows people to just send money directly to the contract address. So by doing this, we're just going to call create tokens. So you can actually send money directly to this address. It'll create the tokens. Um, it'll add it to your balance and then send the money to uh, whoever <clears throat> is the owner of this contract. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and create it. We'll submit, waiting for the transaction, and then we'll just fast forward just so you don't have to wait for this anymore. All right, so the contract has been created. Let's go ahead and copy its address, open up MetaMask. Uh, let's add this token address. Okay, you can see that the func uh, token contract has been found, so we'll add that. So no tokens found, we're watching it, but we don't actually have any tokens. So let's go ahead and send some ether to this contract address. We'll send one ether, submit it, And then we'll wait a little bit. And then fast forward one more time. 
and then we'll see how many tokens we've actually received. All right, so we have our 500 Funk tokens. So we sent our Ether to the contract, and the contract went ahead and calculated everything and actually sent us the 500 tokens. Now, one thing I just noticed that I forgot, uh, in this create tokens function, what we should have done is added the number of tokens to the total supply. So we'll just go ahead and add that here. So total supply equals the total supply plus however many tokens we just created. And we do need to change that from a constant to something that we can actually change. So that's basically it. So that's all you really need for a crowd sale type uh, contract. You can actually add um, some other parameters to this. This is actually recommended by the Ethereum Foundation to add some sort of parameters to your crowd sale. So right now this, uh, this contract will take an unlimited amount of transactions. So people can buy these funk tokens forever. So there is not going to be any set limit on the funk tokens. Um, you can buy tokens as long as Ethereum actually exists. So some things you could do is you could possibly create a variable like max tokens. So if somebody tries to buy tokens and the max tokens have already been reached, you can fail or you can actually have an on off switch um, that the, only the owner can call, which toggles whether or not people can buy tokens. The, it's really up to you and I leave that up to you to go ahead and play around with and uh, use your imagination. If you liked this video, please click like. Um, if you like the content of this channel, please hit subscribe and be sure to tell all your friends about it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.